When the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. He says, the Lord is going to deliver them in your hands, but you still got to conquer them. All right? The Lord is not going to go out there and smite them. He says, I'm going to deliver them into your hand. Then you give them the right hand of fellowship. No, you, you smite them. You smite them. He says, I'm going to deliver them and utterly, and you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. I was thinking this week, I was talking last week about dream killers. And today, I, I, I wanted to say start a fight, but I, I, I know the subject is start a faith fight. It's time to start a faith fight. You may be seated. You know, I, I was thinking about starting a fight because when you recognize that the enemy be playing games, I'm going to say it like we said on the street, the enemy be playing games. He be trying to deceive us. He take a little bit from us here. The enemy is a bully. And, and the worst thing that a bully can, that can happen to a bully is that you stand up to him. In fact, if you want to freak him out, Go up to the bully and say, you know what? You have had your last time to mess with me. It's on and popping. Today, when we get out of school, meet me outside. And tell everybody, because today I'm going to whip your butt. Now, even, even if he has whipped you a hundred times, anybody ever bullied? Anybody? I'm, I'm the only one. I was bullied. I was bullied. Uh, this guy was bullying me and Hard to even imagine me being bullied now that I look back, but I was scared. I was afraid of him. A little short guy, name was Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee where? Those who are joining me from home in Missouri. Bobby Lee, a little stout joker. Strong, muscle-bound, muscles in his neck, hands, everything. And he would just bully me until one day he went to bullying my brother and, and everything in me rose up. And, and I, I beat him down like he had stole something. And I had often told myself, whenever I, I knew I was going to get him sooner or later. Whenever I get him, I'm going to do to him what he did to me. And how many of you know I just didn't have it in me to bully him? Because bullying is something wrong with you in the head. You, you think, you, and, and Bobby was a little slower than everybody else in the classroom. So I know he was working with what he had. He was working with his back because his brain... Not so good. But the devil is a bully. And, and the thing is, he bullied me until I recognized there was something on the inside of me that if I fought back, I could, I could, I could win. Many of us, we talk about dream killers. And up today I'm talking about dream killers start a faith fight. There are things that are killing your vision, killing your dream, and you haven't begun to fight back. You're sitting up here in church, and you got your hands tied behind your back. You're not exercising your faith. This is not a fist fight. This is not a physical fight. This is a faith fight. So too many of us are trying to fight the adversary in our flesh, man. You can't do that. So we need to understand that so many times fear, and we know what fear is, false evidence appearing real, fear so many times stops us from fighting. It stops us. And we've got to know that we're, we've got to learn how to do warfare. We've got, listen, it's not enough to talk about it. It's not enough to shout about it. It's not enough to sing about it. It's not enough to quote scriptures about it. You have got to find a way to stand in the word and, be, and not be moved by what your feelings are doing. Many of us are being led continually by our feelings. Some of y'all didn't come to church today because you looked out. 
You say, I don't feel like going out there in that rain. So many things that God is trying to do in our lives. He's trying to get us beyond our feelings and let us walk in our faith. You do not need faith for what you already have. You need faith for what you have a vision of, a dream of. That's when you need it. When you got it, you don't need faith. Anybody can come and say, Pastor Campbell, we're so glad you got the new housing. But where were they the eight years, the 10 years, the 20 years? It's anybody can join you after you have accomplished it. But you need some people who will ride or die with you in the midst of when you don't always do what you know to do. When you fall and you fall back, you need some people who can give you just a little bit of grace because they need the same thing. Amen. You need somebody who cannot be led by their feelings and led by their emotions, but are willing to stand up and fight with their faith. I got anybody here that's a faith fighter. You're your faith fighter. Just wave at me. Because you know, I don't need it. I don't need it. You need it. You need it for yourself. We are encouraged to fight the good fight of faith. The faith fight, it's an internal fight. This is not external. It's a fight to believe what God said. It's a fight to endure under what God has said. It's a fight to survive when what God said is not happening in your life. He says, I need you to know that I have seven enemies in the promised land and then he says, they are more powerful than you are. God says, listen, I don't want you to think that this is going to be easy. That's part of our problem. We're looking for it to be easy. We think because we said yes to the Lord and we're being obedient, then we don't have to deal with any bad things. Listen, when you get to your promise, even though God gave it to you, Corey, you still got problems. Even though he gave you the business and is thriving, you still have problems. Even though he gave you the church and God is moving, you still have problems. And he left the problems there because you better learn how to fight by faith or those problems will overtake you. And he says, listen, sometimes we don't want to fight. But every time you fight a faith fight, you strengthen your faith. So what got you before didn't get you this time. Or maybe it got you this time, but you got three steps in down the road before you fail. And then I have to ask you, what is your relationship with failure? Just think about it. Some of you are so afraid to fail that you won't do anything unless you're assured of success. Now, you can be assured of success if you don't try to do much, if you don't try to accomplish much. I, I, I'm still reminded that the road that leads to little is crowded because everybody's going because they don't want to have to do much. Only 3% of people who use their potential and excel to the highest level because they're willing to do what others are not willing to do. I was talking to a young man recently. He was talking about wanting to be a millionaire. He's in his 30s and he, he says, I want to be a millionaire in 10 years. But every time I think about the pressure, every time I think about doing all the work, it causes me to be overwhelmed and I find myself pulling back because I, 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 I want to be a millionaire, but I don't want to be overwhelmed. He says, I want to be a millionaire, but I don't want any pressure. I want to be a millionaire, but I want to be able to uh, put my family first and do what I want to do, travel the world. He says, I want all of these things, but I don't want to have to fight for it. I don't want to have to sacrifice for it. I don't want any pressure on it. I don't want any problems on it. Well, come here, lump of coal. The only way you're going to turn into a diamond you're going to have to be buried. Nobody going to know your name. You're going to be underground. You're going to be under pressure for a long time. You're going to be working your crap, building your skills, and then they're going to call you an overnight success after 20 years. 
But so many times we want it, but we don't want to fight by faith. What this faith fight tells me is that I've got to believe. Any believers in here? Not for me, not for what I'm doing, what you're doing. Do you really believe it? I'm involved in this Duke leadership curriculum, and there were about 40 folks from counties throughout the region when we're talking about homelessness. And um, they took half the day to allow us three minutes to go around the room. In this room, we got, we've got uh, mayors and commissioners and city councilmen and, and, and uh, executive directors and presidents of, of well-established companies and we got regular folks, but we got millionaire folks who who making multi, multi, multi-million dollars. Can I tell you something? We ran around the circle, and what I found, almost every person in there, they told us, tell about a transformative moment in your life. And we had folks who were executive directors and presidents of large companies who told their story that they were adopted, some were abused, we had a guy there that was a councilman that spent years in prison, but yet he's a city councilman now. We saw other folks who, who started out with no education, low education, homeless. What is the difference between them reaching their dream and you reaching yours? Many of us are not willing to fight. We're willing to do what we know to do in the flesh, but not in the spirit. Here's the point. Acts chapter 2, 17, it says that in the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters, who, those who don't think women should preach, your sons and your daughters should, shall prophesy. Your young men will have visions and your old men will dream dreams. What we forget, people of God, we forget. The spirit of the living God is in us. And many of us, we plan without praying and we perform without planning. And what God is saying, I'm going to pour out my spirit on you. And if you confess and believe that you're a child of God, you have his spirit and his spirit is to lead you, guide you, encourage you, cause you to stand in the midst of adversity and be overcome things that are coming against you. But too many of us don't remember we've got his spirit. We forgot that you are not alone. He was telling them, you are going to go up against enemies that are greater than you, smarter than you have more money than you, have more connections than you. But don't forget, I gave you my spirit. You have his, I have his spirit. It's his spirit that causes me to have the vision in the first place, to have the dream in the first place. If I went and got the dream, if I got the, the dream on my own, then I have to pay for it. But if God gave it to me, God has to pay for it. Because every place he gives vision, he gives what? Provision for the vision. But if you're moving and you're, you're, you're offended that God told you and you've been obedient and you're still going through problems, and some of us are starting to pull back on God because you think that if I said yes to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, then maybe I shouldn't have any problems. Well, the only time you will not have problems is when this mortal puts on immortality. But as long as you in this flesh body, he says you shall have tribulations, problems. So what, why are you tripping because God has given you something and it's bigger than you, Bobby? It's bigger than you, Fred. It's bigger than you, Corey. It's bigger. Kadar, it's bigger than you. But God has already said, I am going to give you victory over all seven. 
Seven being the number what? Completion. He says, listen, I'm going to completely destroy your enemies. He says, I, I don't want you to go in. I don't, want you to, I don't want you to consult with them. I don't want you to eat with them. And now, let me pause here. Let me pause here. Because some preachers, especially during civil rights and slavery, were saying that we're not supposed to, to marry other people and other ethnicities. This is the Lord talking to them about going in and connecting with them and taking their gods, taking their images, and he says, and we recognize, he says, he gets specific. He says, I don't want your sons to marry their daughters and, and your daughters to marry their sons because it'll cause them to chase after other gods. And listen, I don't care how wise you are, Solomon, if you connect with somebody and you're intimate with them, what's on them will get on you. And God even says, listen, it happens both ways. That's why the, un, the, the saved wife can win the unsaved. Because what's on you will get on them. But he lets them know that, listen, whatever you're fighting against, don't get overwhelmed because it's bigger than you. Don't get overwhelmed because it's stronger than you. God is telling you in advance, I gave you my spirit and I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to deliver them into your hands. Come on, give, give the Lord a hand break. I said, listen, he says, I'm going to deliver them into your hands. They're bigger than you. They, they may have more connections than you. What I found the other day when I was in this in this room is every one of us. I, I started out by saying I was an overcomer and everybody in the room was an overcomer. Everybody was telling stories that you would think, whoa, am I in a room with the leaders of the region and they got all of these issues? I was strung out on drugs. I, I had a kid early. I had, a, I had this, I stuttered. I was in slow class all around the room. All around, there was a one lady that was a West Point graduate, and she began to talk about what she went through. She's married to a three-star general, but she was telling me about her going through all of these things, going in West Point in the early 70s. A woman, it was still then that a woman couldn't even get certain jobs. But everybody in there, Nobody knows what you've been through. Stop rehearsing your bad stuff and start claiming what God has given you. He's given you the victory. If any man or woman be in Christ, he's what? Was what? Stop rehearsing that old stuff. And I told myself, ne never again. I'm not going to tell I'm an overachiever. I know what God has done with me, but I'm not going to talk like that anymore. Because he's doing great things in my life. Uh, and, and, and it's important that when you get a vision from the Lord, you don't consume it. It consumes you. It consumes you. It gives you an energy. Somebody was talking to me about how busy my schedule is, and I had to admit that I'm out of balance. But I know that it's for a season. And, and, and they said, well, you know, you've gotten energy from this thing. I got energy not because I chose to do it. I was called to do it. I'm simply answering the call. And God says he will renew your strength. When you get something that God is calling you to do, he will give you the, all of a sudden you, you're quickened, you're made alive. Because all of a sudden, something you didn't ask for, I didn't ask for it. It wasn't on my radar, but God has put me in the place. And every time I turn around, somebody is asking me, should I take the leadership over? And I'm thinking, what? Your gift. Your gift. But if you're too afraid to accept the position, you're too afraid to step out and, and claim what God has told you. I got some doctors in here that's supposed to go get your PhD. I got some business owners. I got some homeowners. I, I got some better parents, some better husbands, some better wives. 
some better single people. Let me pause here, right here. Single folks. So often, I was thinking this morning that so often we are waiting on the Lord for that which he has promised us. And God doesn't move by our timetable. And you sitting over there hearing the clock and you, Lord, you, you know, I'm, I'm 40. I'm 50. I wanted a child, Lord, and you, it, this can't be lining up. Can I, can I present this to you, please, please? I know you may have a dream of what you want in your life, single man, single woman. I know you may have a dream. And God never fails to deliver on what he promises. He says, I, I will keep my promise for a thousand years. He will keep his promise. It may not be the way you want it to be. But one thing I want you to pause and think about. What if God has planned not necessarily for you to birth the child, but to adopt the child that takes care of you, and he's got the perfect woman for you, and, and uh, the, in the case it's a man, the perfect woman, or in the case it's a woman, the perfect man, and, and he's going to bring them into your life when they have gone through all their mess, so you don't have to go through it. And what if, what if you put your life right now on hold because you say you can't live until you get what God has for you? What a waste. Why don't you live as if this is it? What would you do if you, if you recognize that maybe God will bring it later or maybe he won't bring it at all? What is it that you put on hold because you're saying, I'm waiting on the Lord? Don't forget, He's not made in our image. We're made in his image. He's not moving according to our timeline. We got to move according to his timeline. What if what you're hoping for, would you live any different? Would you be, would you, would you embrace life? Would you, would you, would you go places, find friends and say, listen, listen, I am not going to sit here and sit in my house and be an old maid. While I'm waiting on what God is going to do, I'm going to live. And in the process of living, you'll be at the grocery store. And your countenance is so beautiful and you're so satisfied being who you are. You think somebody's going to come in and complete you? It don't work like that. Mm -mm. If you're empty or you have empty, you know what you're going to do? You're going to drain the life out of whoever you get with. Because you're going to be pulling on them for what you should have got from him. You're going to be pulling on them. You complete me. That sounds good in the movie. That ain't life. That ain't life. That ain't life. So live. Somebody say live. Yes. Yes. That ain't the only thing. He says I'm going to bring dreams. Plural. You ought to have a dream. Many of us don't have dreams. We don't have visions. We're just going aimlessly. We're going aimlessly through life. Your obedience to God will not alleviate you from tough times. Live your life. Dream your dreams. You ought to have a dream for yourself, your family, your future. You ought to have multiple dreams. Moses is saying to him, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. He says, he doesn't say, if I bring you in, to the promised land. He says, when it will happen. When, he says. We have to be confident that whatever God says, it will happen. It will happen. And, 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 and everybody else don't have to buy into that, but you do. It's your vision. He says, I'm going to give you seven enemies. And he named these enemies, and we are fighting these enemies still today. We're still fighting these seven enemies that are greater, stronger, bigger, smarter. And I need you to know these enemies are really spirits. In that day, they would name people by their characteristic. They would name them by their character. And he says, how in the world can you beat a spirit in the natural? That's why you got to fight a faith fight. Not a fist fight, but a faith fight. He says, I need you to be aware because 
I know you have dreams and visions, but you got to be aware of these enemies that you're going to have to be mindful in the spirit of what you're fighting. And he tells them, he says to them, over in Deuteronomy 20 and 1, you can read it when you get a chance. He says, when you go out to war against these enemies who is more than you, do not be afraid. He's still saying it's going to be bigger than you. You're, you're not going to know where you're going to get the money. You're not going to know how you're going to get promoted. You're, you're going to be in some places where they don't like you because you are you. That's it. They don't like you because you are you. Whatever you are, they don't like. And, and, and guess what? But God will use that because the, if you go to your feelings, you'll run in your feelings. But if you stand in your faith, now you begin to exercise your faith regardless of your feelings and you can stay there and you'll watch people that didn't like you leave and you'll take their position. But if you got you all in your feelings, you you one of these ignorant folks, dumb, I'm saying, leave a job and you don't have a job. Because they don't like you. You want a friend? What? Get a dog. You go to work to get paid. They ain't gotta like you. Just pay me. Pay me. And I'm gonna stay right here until God moves me. Promotions don't come from you, no way. He says, these are the seven enemies. He says that your enemy is more powerful than you. Therefore, you must be able to fight in the spirit. Because then they're not fighting what's on you. They're fighting what's in you. Mm -hmm. He says the first ones were the Hittites. The, the name Hittites mean terror, fear, intimidation. They were, they were big, giant warriors. And they love to fight. You ever had anybody? Were you? Did you? Were you one of them that liked to fight? I can see it on you. Pat, I know you like to fight. Look at you. You got that look on your face. Let me look over here. Brad, you like to fight? Brad is a peace-loving man. But these people, they were good at it. They were the bullies. And we've got to understand, fear of man will prove to be a snare but whoever trusts in the Lord will be kept safe. Proverbs tells us that. So you don't be afraid of what a man can do to you. Don't be afraid of what that job can do to you. You didn't get that job because you were so good. God gave it to you. Now, if you give him glory for it, even if it's not the job you wanted, you were unemployed and God gave you employment and it's a start. And sometimes God will cause you, uh, uh, allow you to lose a job and you step right into a career. They push you right out because you weren't going to leave. How long you been doing that? All my life. And just because somebody don't like you, they thought they were doing you damage. But listen, here's the hard part. When they push you out, you don't have what's next and you got to walk in that space. <laughs> and you got to walk in between. When you're in between blessings, when you can't seem like the Lord has stopped talking, he says, watch out for the Hittites. Watch out for what tries to cause you to be intimidated. You go into rooms, listen to me. The reason I'm telling you, I was in this room. I don't think I felt any intimidation, but I did feel some apprehension about just telling my story and the rest of it. Not anymore. And I told it without hesitation and took an extra 15 to 20 seconds because I could. I took those seconds to, 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 to give somebody else praise. But don't let anybody intimidate you because everybody is facing the same thing. Everybody is facing. Am I right? Charm was in the room. Everybody was facing Everybody dealing with the imposter syndrome. You think because you, if you don't have a bachelor's degree, you think once I get the bachelor's degree, I'll feel better about myself. It's not going to change what they think about you. It's going to change what you think about you. 
If I get the masters, oh, I can walk differently. Why don't you realize that God is on the inside of you? He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. And, and go ahead and step into being what he called you to be. His chosen people. His royal priesthood. His own ones that he loves. And he don't love you because you all of that. He loves you in spite of. Because you, know you, you know you got some issues. And God looks at your issues and says, come on over here with your bad self. Not like you bad, bad, like you bad, like you bad, like the one that need a good spanking. Come on, you my kid. And I, I can see some of y'all that you know you were bad, but God loved you anyway. Thank God he loved me too. He says, the, the Gergesites, he says, they are nomadic people, roaming. They are the ones who have unstable mindset. What's robbing you of your success, of your dreams, is you are, you're all over the place. Every time somebody bring up something, you, you're all on top of it. You're unstable as water. You take the shape of whatever you pour it into, or whatever's pouring you. And all of a sudden, you're like, well, I'm, I'm over here. I'm over there. I think this. I think that. You've got to understand that you've got to fight. That feeling of insecurity, a feeling of inadequacy. You're the one telling everybody that you're inadequate. Stop. Death in life. In your mouth. Why don't you change what you think about you? But you got to change what you think before you can change what you say. The battle. Listen, I come here to preach. I don't come to preach for inspiration. I'm not here preaching to motivate you. I'm here not to even illuminate you. I'm preaching God's word to transform you. And we are transformed by what we think. We're transformed by what we think. How are you going to do differently if you won't think differently? So we understand that you, got, you can't just roam here and there and, and attach your feelings to everything that's moving. He, he talks about the Amorites. We have to war against arrogance, proud, boastful. They were always challenging, fault-finding, fault perverse. These were the same people that would offer up their children to gods and incest. Arrogant, think you know. Because you can intimidate people with your, with your, with your background, with, uh, with your use of the language, with, with the way you look. Because sometimes the beautiful people, it's a blessing and a curse. I know, because I deal with it. <laughs> I deal with a lot of things. That ain't it. <laughs> But, but sometimes, because people, the way you look, people think you one thing. Sometimes people are intimidated by you because the way you look. Or, or you know, uh, they, they, they want to manipulate you. They don't want you for you. They want you for them. And now they, you, you, you keep on using me until you use me up. And that's where people find themselves if they, if they don't get a hold of the fact that, of that vanity. And because God will give you success, but some of us can't handle the success. You make it about you. And what God is saying, listen, you got to, as uh, Elder Paul said, he said, you know what? I give God the glory for all the things he's given me. He said, for 30 years, I've been faithful over the Lord. So when I receive something, I give him the glory for it. Because the earth is the, is the Lord in the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. So he lets us know. And, and we're reminded in 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16. Write that down, read it when you get a chance. He says, as obedient children, do not conform yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance. You were doing good, man. Give me that other one there. <laughs> he says, 
But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all, in all, in all of your conduct. And verse 16. And he's saying, he says, he the one that called you is holy, you be holy. But I need you to know this, that God is the one that called you because it is written, be holy because I'm holy. How are you going to be holy? When you're full of Hades. Here's how. You are not holy because of your righteousness. You're holy because of his. And where sin abounds, grace does more abound. So when I get down and do my dirt and I repent, I am now restored to righteousness. I, I take my dark sins and they're cleansed. It's as if it never happened. I start from perfection again every day and every time I repent. That's how you be holy. You can do it in and of the law. Uh-uh. That's a trick. That's a trick of the enemy. So he says to us, don't let arrogance and pride and boastfulness cause you to lose what God has for you. The Canaanites, these were the financial giants. They, they were motivated by greed and lust for material wealth. And so what God will do, he'll bring you from the project house to the penthouse, and then you want to take credit for the whole journey. And then you start boasting about who you are. God said, oh boy. He says, when I've given you houses that you did not build and wells you did not dig, do not forget the Lord your God that brought you. Some of us can't handle the success. Why? Because now you got more money and before you didn't have money but you had God but then you gave up God. Money, 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 money. Yeah. And it'll happen to you. You don't even know it's happening. Go check your tithing. Go check your tithing. Go check your time. You go check your time. Corey, I'm, last time I'm going to speak about you for the next three months. This man say, you know what, Pastor, I ain't opening up on Sunday. I got to be, me and my wife, we're going to be in church. We're going to be in, hey. He said, I don't care. Mm -mm. And, and, and I shared with him years ago, I said, man, God is going to do this. Remember? I said, he's going to do it. Can you handle the success? Can you handle the money? Or do you say, oh, because money answers all things, right? So you start saying, God, I don't need you for this. I got this. What about my tithe? Hey, I got it. <laughs> I'm talking about your success. God don't want you to have success without him. He don't want you to have it. He doesn't want you to have it. Because why? It puts the emphasis on you. And we all can get lost in our own minds about who we are. It's, it's the seat of arrogance, puffed up, hot air, emptiness, thinking you're, 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 you're all swollen with yourself, prideful. And you know what comes before the fall? Pride. He says, the Canaanites, can you handle the prosperity or can you handle the pressure that comes with the prosperity. Yeah. You know, a lot of people got big, nice houses, but they're miserable because they don't have the one that gave them the house. Mm-hmm. He, he talks about the parasites. These are the ones. They were a ragtag people. They, they had no discipline. They had no restrictions. If it feels good, do it. And you got to fight yourself. There's some stuff you know you, you have to stop. There's some things you have to stop doing. There's some things, you know, um, my wife doesn't have a problem with chocolate. I do. My name is Rob Campbell. I'm a chocoholic. 
She might eat a Snickers once every two months. She asked me for one yesterday. I went in and I bought her two. I think I was buying them because I wanted her to have two. I gave them both to her. But when I, when I went and bought them, I felt like, whoo, whoo, the nuts, the sweetness. And I, I brought them right and I gave them both to her. That may not seem like much for you, but Dr. Ada, I'm, I'm going somewhere and I'm trying to do something with my life. I want to fast for a lifetime. I want to make my, my health equal to my wealth. Come on, somebody. But you've got to fight you. I don't, I don't think she's ever asked me for a Snickers for, to stop and pick up one. I think that was the first time, honestly. And I think that was the, the enemy trying to use it. Because I was hungry too. I wanted it so bad, but I said no. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise for the victory. I'm looking at Patrick Borkin, tall, skinny self. He, he thinking, Pastor, I know you ain't got, it can't be that bad. Yes, it is. It is bad. It's bad for me. <laughs> but I notice when we go to lunch, he eats clean. I'm going to start eating clean too. But he says to us, you got to watch these things. These are the fights. And these things don't take place out there. It's in your mind. What is it that God is trying to do in your life that you got to get your mind around it? Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your wealth. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your singleness. Maybe, I don't know what it is, but you got to stay in the game. God says, I'm going to transform you in your mind. Do you know your life can start over right now? Whatever area it is in. He says the, the Hivites, they love luxury things. And there's nothing wrong. But they also had the philosophy, if it feels good, do it. And, 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 and so many of these things are based on God's principle. He says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Money ain't bad. If so, give me yours. Give me yours. I'll take care of it. I'll put it in its right place. And when you need some of it, come. I, 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 I think I'm going to remember. He says the Jebusites, they were people who exploited other people, polluted others through their own immoral acts. You've got to know that some of the Jebusites are your friends. Mm -hmm. They mean you well, but they're the one. When you say, I'm trying to stop, they be like, oh, girl, I got you. I got you. I picked up some for you too. God is saying to us that we need to understand that we have to start a faith fight over our feelings, over our... You know what I'm, I'm, I, I realize? God has given me three things and it's crystallized for me. It, it's family, church, and community. It's all by faith. And I cannot tell you, I don't know if it's working for you, but I'm seeing it working in a lot of people's lives. My question is, what about you? Why do you want to sit here and hear other people's testimonies? But what about your own? But many of us want mountaintop testimonies, but we don't want the valley experience. It's in the valley experience that I find out what my true character is. And my, my true self is revealed. I keep saying to people that when I'm dealing with a situation, it's not about the situation or the person. It's really about me. How do I respond to this situation? How do I respond to this assault? Or how do I respond to this prosperity? Or how do I respond to this opportunity? Do I make it all about me? Or do I keep it about him do I continue to give him praise honor and glory for the good times and the bad because he promised me he'll never leave me so whatever I'm going through he's with me and if I learn to keep a God consciousness and if I learn to uh, reveal his principles many of us we want one fight we want that one hit or quitter you know when you and the fight is over no, that's not how wars are won. They call them campaigns. 
and you fight over and over and over and over. Some of us have gotten so tired of fighting that you quit. And you're wondering why things aren't changed. You've settled because you don't know what it takes to get to a victory. The people in that room all had stories. This one lady was adopted and, and, and denied by her family and one thing after another. Another man, all of these people who are the current leaders in our region. And they all had a story. The only problem is, man of God, woman of God, you allow your failure to be final. What is your relationship with failure? Failure is a companion of mine. He shows up periodically. He shows up, he keeps on showing up because I keep on messing up, but I can, have learned to fail fabulously. I keep learning from it. I, failure will never be final for me until God takes me out of this natural body and put me into an immortal body. It's a companion. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tries to talk me out of what God called me to. And he's good all the time. He's doing it all the time. And what I've learned to do is give myself just a little bit of grace. I have learned, I'm going to mess up. Anybody here know you, you mess up sometimes? Well, if God can forgive you, why not you? Sometimes people will forgive you, but you're still walking around with it. Man, that's a lie from the pit. Even if they don't forgive you. You apologize and forgive yourself and move on. Mm -mm, ain't nobody got no time for that. Uh-uh, no. None of us are perfect. Why does God let the sinful desires in our flesh remain? Why didn't he just, come on God, when I accepted you, why didn't you just take away the taste? Why didn't he just take away, I don't want nuts or chocolate? Betty gave me some nuts. I can't, eat, I can't eat cashews no more. I ate them yesterday, though. I went home and thought about it. See, that's a setup. See, all these, all these people call themselves my friends. Gave me two bags of cashews. I almost didn't take them. But I thought, I'm going to take them this time. Don't offer me no more, Betty, because I'm weak. God lets us know, I, I, I really want to speak to your future. You have to learn how to fight. You have to learn how to face your problems with God's promises. I know that you may be going through a difficult thing, and none of us look like what we're going through. Understand that the enemy's job is to beat you down. Destroy your confidence in God. But if you got your confidence in yourself, you can't call on God. See, because then you are limited to what you feel and what you can see in the present. But we are supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. We're supposed to walk by faith and not by feelings. So, but if you're caught up in walking by what you feel and what you see, you don't really depend on your faith. But I'm calling you to exercise it. Even Jesus learned from the things, he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Now why would Jesus learn by the things that he suffered and you not? He learned obedience by the suffering. See, many of us are not willing to pay the price to be obedient, we are not willing to suffer, to sacrifice, to go without, to do what God says, even though it hurts. And it's not changing. But Jesus learned obedience by what he suffered. When you're suffering, it reveals to you who you are. It reveals to you who you are. I had a situation yesterday, and, uh, and I kept giving grace, and somebody said, man, you, what's wrong with you? I don't, there's nothing wrong with me. It's how I'm wired. 
Not perfect, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. But it, it was my instinct, my natural proclivity. We were doing the security drill, and they told me if something were to happen, we were practicing. They told me first to kneel down and let people come and circle me. Then they told me uh, uh, if something happens, I should run to that room. And then we practice again, and I didn't just kneel down. I laid down on here because I, I, I saw this as concealed and covered military. And then I got up, and I said, man, listen, 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 listen. I can't do that. Ain't nothing in the world will make me run out of here if somebody runs. Y'all need to give me a weapon because I ain't running. I'm not running from the gunshots. I'm running to it. All, Here's the point. Here's the point. When the pressure gets on, who you are is going to come out. And when you see it, you recognize it, and you don't try it. I've already decided. I tried it yesterday. I felt like a punk. I ain't no punk. I ain't no punk. I ain't, I know, is it okay to say punk in church? I done said it three times. I ain't doing it. But there's some other things I ain't doing. I'm not going to let the devil punk me out of my pr promise. I'm not going to let him pimp me out of what God called me to. I'm not going to let him threaten me. I'm not going to allow him to take my temporary failures and somehow define my future because I failed. I'm okay with failure. I don't want it, but it lives with me because I'm trying things that are beyond my reach. I'm fighting enemies that are bigger and stronger than me. And I've got to learn how to fight in the spirit. So I may fall down sometime. I may get knocked down sometime. But I'm not getting up in my flesh. I'm getting up in my faith. I'm getting up in my faith. And we all have to understand, he says to us, the man that puts his hand to the plow, and that's what you've done. Many of us have said, God, I, I'm putting my hand to the plow. He says, but if you do it and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. You're not fit for the promise. And I'm trying to call you to a higher level in him. you got to fight in the spirit. You must fight. You must be fit and maintain your fight. You must be fit to fight and keep your focus on the fight. It's a spiritual battle. You will see the symptoms of it, but it's a spiritual thing. Every time the enemy comes in like a flood, God says the spirit of the living God will raise up a standard against him. That standard is his word, that word that I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against him. So when the enemy comes in to overwhelm me, here comes the spirit of God coming out of my body, out of my mouth, out of my mind, and God gets the victory in my life. You got to start a faith fight for whatever it is. It's so easy. Most people are not reaching their dreams because the nightmare about failure. You got nightmares about failure. Oh, what if I fail? You are going to. You're going to. Stop tripping. You are going to fail. Fail big. Fail big. Why you want these little bitty failures? I want a big failure. Yeah, God, trust me to fail big. I'm on a platform. I'm over here talking about what God going to do. I've been talking about it for years. I'm never going to stop talking about it. And I also understand that I'm starting something that somebody else will build. If I'll be faithful over this, whoever takes my place will be able to take it to the next level. God has you on assignment where you are and when you are. Be faithful over what he gave you to do. Your children, your children's children to the third and the fourth generation. There's a difference between having fear and fear having you. Too many of y'all fear got you. 
You ain't trying nothing that it looks like you might fail. So when you even when you get success, you got these little bitty successes. There's nothing wrong with starting with little successes. Is that all you want? Is that all you want? You God, if you could just keep my lights on and keep me in this apartment, I'm happy. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I got food in my refrigerator. Hey, God, he did it. That's okay. But I don't know about you. I serve a big God. He said he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all, 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 all. You over here talking about, man, you act like you got a miniature God. I got a masterful God. Warriors, you are a warrior. Yeah, you understand that the enemy does not fight you for what's on you. He's fighting you for what's in you. If he can get you to be afraid, God is asking me to do stuff now I never desired. But then I, every time I go somewhere, he's opening the door. But I'm finding out that people that God has put around me, now I have to call them. I got some people on speed dial. They be like, yeah, pastor, you know it's 630 in the morning, right? You do know it's 10 o'clock at night, right? You understand that my phone rings? I said, put it on no notification. Turn off the notification. But God will do it, and he'll put people around you. I'm trying to ignite this thing that God has given you to do. Warriors, you have to understand your strength comes from the power of God. Look at your neighbor and tell him there's power in you. Yeah, I got, I got God's spirit in me. That's why I can do it. I can do all things. But you, why you act like you can't? Why you act like a wimp? God called you wonderfully made. You tell oh, I'm not wonderful, I'm a wimp. You are what you say you are. But don't put that on me. And don't be getting mad at me. Oh, he think he's somebody. Yes! Yes, I do. Don't you? Yes. The enemy knows who you are better than you. We're supposed to be transformed. I don't come to inspire you. If you get inspired, great. But I want you to change forms. Change perspective. Modify your behavior. Begin to walk by faith. Begin to claim something that's too big for you. Begin to slay a giant. Begin to slay a giant. Find something that's too big that you are guaranteed to fail without God. The enemy starts getting us to where we, we just dream mediocrity. We don't want nothing. We don't want nothing. Put God to the test. Make a decision to reach for your dream. Declare war on everything that does not align with where you're going in Christ. Declare war on it. Decide. Commit yourself. And we know that without commitment, you will not start. Without consistency, you will not finish what you start. Many of us are committed, but we're not consistent. I was in my, my living room the other day and got this mat. And uh, I, I started trying to do some yoga. I, I was in there and my wife, I was laughing. My wife was in the kitchen and she said, what are you laughing about? The thing told me to reach down and touch my toes. And I thought, that ain't about to happen. <laughs> told me to hug my knees and lay down and roll over to the one side. <laughs> told me to make a figure four with my leg and stand there. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> now, why would I want to do this? I want my health to align with my wealth. So I'm going I'm, I'm to do this yoga. When I get, up, when I, when I get it right, y'all, I'm going to be up here. One leg going to be up there. One be right here. 
I know y'all like to see that. I would too. Don't start, Pat. I can see the look on your face. And Katrina, you're talking about, hmm, i like to see that. I'm going to get a picture. I need you to know as I wrap this up, I'm sorry I'm taking so much time, but I need you to get this. And I know I scream and holler, but I ain't mad. I'm just passionate. I, I'm, I just believe this thing. I believe God wants better for you. I don't consider where you are. Consider where you're going. And start saying no to anything that ain't going where you're going. You don't, you don't have to make any grand professions. Just stop calling them. And don't answer when they call. After about two or three months, they'll stop. And the reason I'm saying don't go out and make a bunch of grand professions is because you need to walk this thing just a little bit. And, and, and it's hard to go cold turkey. And part of what you are doing, you need to be around it and not in it. You need to be able to say no. You need to be able to like, I was sitting at dinner with some people the other day, and I know they had just got through getting high because it's been a long time, but when I was in the military, they would burn weed so you could know the smell. Amen. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Uh, all right, maybe that was a stretch. That was Elder Carter, don't be doing that. Don't be doing that. All right, I, I was around some folks. I knew what it smelled like. And they all came in, and the, the aroma just came in with them. And they all sitting there, and I'm thinking, Woo, that's some, that's, oh, that's some. Now, what they don't know, because they're in it, they don't know I can see it. I can smell it. I could have had some issues with it in my life. But the fact that I'm around it and I can see it now better than I was when I was in it. And I smelt it, but I didn't have any urge to go do it. It was a sign to me that those things are passed away. All things have become new to me now. And because it doesn't fit with where I'm going, I can't entangle myself with that old stuff. I got to begin to get around people that stretch me and cause me to come up and introduce me to people who are going where I want to go. It may sound strange. My, my wife didn't know when she asked me to go, and I never answered her. I thought, when I first got her, I said, go get her a Snickers, hungry as I am. Okay, here we go. That's a small thing. What's your small thing? What's your small thing? You've got to declare war. You've got to declare war. Is it your health? Is it your wealth? Is it relationships? Is it your loneliness? Are you dealing with mental instability and you know it? But you won't even go to, you ain't got to tell nobody. Go to see the doctor for yourself. Look, I'm hearing voices. I'm not. But I'm saying if you are, you need to fight. I, I, I guess I am. I am hearing voices. The devil tells me no when God has told me yes. Come on, praise team. Y'all the reason I keep talking. I'm waiting on y'all. Come on. Come on. It's Zay's fault. Yeah, I hear the same voices. The same voices that talk to you. They... They talk to me. They just talk to me about different things. They talk to me about my struggles. They talk to me about my issues. And I've got to, to understand that I can't fight this thing in my flesh. My flesh is attuned to it. My, my flesh craves it. My flesh is at enmity with my spirit. So I've got to learn how to fight a faith Fight, not a fist fight, not a physical fight, but a faith fight. I got to know that life and death is in my mouth. Y'all stand to your feet. I got to know that I can take authority. Whatever you bound on earth will be bound in heaven. I got to take every thought 
captive to the obedience of the Spirit of God that's in me. Come on, praise team. I've got to get to the place where I recognize we're in a spiritual battle. 